is the Kissinger equation used for? The Kissinger equation is used to obtain the activation energy of a thermal decomposition reaction. In this video, we'll focus on results of TGA analysis. From the equation, Q is the heating rate, Tp is the peak temperature at which the maximum composition occurs, Ed is the activation energy of decomposition, A is the pre-exponential factor, and R is the gas constant. How do we determine the activation energy based on TGA analysis results? Let's take a look at an example and how the determination is all possible just by using Microsoft Excel. From this Excel window, we can see all the data of an experiment. In this experiment, we have four sets of data corresponding to four heating rates, which are 10, 20, 25, and 30 Kelvin per minute. Let's refer back to the equation of Kissinger. So in this equation, it can be corresponded with y equals to mx plus c, which is the linear equation, in which y is negative ln q over tp squared, m is ed over r, x is 1 over tp, and c is negative ln ar over ed. We can obtain the activation energy of the composition, ed, through this, but there are preliminary steps before obtaining the ed, whereby we must first obtain the non-linear graph from each set of data. So let's start with the first set of data. We have to do is, we have to highlight this data in which the x-axis is the temperature and the y-axis is the derivative weight percentage. We go to insert and we make a chart graph and then we will be left with a graph and the graph will look something like this. So looking at the graph, we can see there is a major peak, which is what we want as our TP. When we put our cursor on it, it will give us like an estimate of a data. From the estimate that we have gotten, by putting our cursor on the graph at the end of the major peak, all we have to do is we have to find that temperature on the data table. And when we find the temperature, we will have to look at the derivative weight percentage. As we can see, the data that we have estimated, that does not have the lowest derivative weight percentage. The data above is what we have as the lowest derivative weight percentage. So what we have to do is we have to take that temperature instead. So that temperature will be our TP for this set of data whereby we have a heating rate of 10 kelvins per minute. We will repeat these exact steps for sets with heating rates of 20, 25, and 30 Kelvin per minute. Now that we have all our peak temperatures for all four sets, we shall convert the values into Kelvin by adding 273.15. So what we have to do is we have to equate it, press on that um, cell, and we add with 273.15 and we repeat that for the other three datas. After we have converted everything to Kelvin, 
we can now fill out the data to prepare to generate another graph of negative ln q over tp squared versus 1 over tp. So for that, for tp squared, it is just tp in Kelvin times tp. And that is how we do it. And we do it for the other three datas as well. And we have to make sure that we press on the correct cell to obtain the correct value. So for Q over TP squared, the only thing we have to do is we just have to click on the corresponding Q. So in this case, this is 10 and we divide it over the TP squared value that we just calculated. So we do it for 20, we do it for 25 and we do it for 30 as well. For the next insert, we have a negative ln q over tp squared. So what we have to do is we have to type negative ln and we click on the previous calculation of q over tp squared. And that is how we will get the answer in these cells. And bear in mind that we have to have a bracket um, before the values so that there will be no error. For the calculation of 1 over tp, all we have to do is we have to equate it with 1 over the corresponding tp values that we've calculated in Kelvin and we do that for all 4 heating rates. And we have to bear in mind that this temperature, tp, has to be in Kelvin. If we put it in Celsius, degree Celsius, we will get a different answer and it will be incorrect. We can now generate the linear graph. So this is how we will do it. Y-axis will be this highlighted negative ln q over tp squared, whereby where else the x-axis will be 1 over tp, and we will be using these four datas. And what we will do is we will go to insert, and we will go to charts where we will have our new graph. And we have to make sure that the axis are what we want and in this case it is not what we want so all we have to do is we have to go and switch it switched so you can see this is all correct now we have to go and add our trend line and we also have to show our equation so that we can obtain a gradient of the graph and how we do that is we just go to format trend line and we will be getting the equation and this is what we'll get we will make it bigger so it's easier to be seen To obtain the activation energy, this gradient value that we have gotten from the equation is multiplied by the gas constant 8.3145.
This is done because the gradient is actually ED over R and we only need ED. So that is why we multiply it. So that is what we're supposed to do. And we will get the answer. And the answer I will highlight in yellow to indicate that that is the final answer. So this is how the determination of activation energy of the composition is done using Kissinger equation on Microsoft Excel. This is the summary of the final answer. Thank you for watching.